William Goldwyn, certainly. I mean, he's the father of anarchy. I mean, in the, uh, he's been turning it rather a lot lately. We, uh, when we did the article in the second issue of Dodge and Logic, um, we were, where well, I was talking about anarchy, as I understood it. Then, yeah, obviously we have to mention Godwin, because even though the name, the word anarchy, hadn't been invented then, the principles of it were all pretty much as he laid down in, was it political justice? Yeah. And uh, then when I was up at uh, Gateshead, up in Newcastle, a few weeks ago, um, that was a really lovely event. There was also, there was Ian Sinclair was there and um, Tom Picard, the poet. And uh, we were talking about just the industrial revolution, we were talking about how it was all tied in together, the science, the politics, the art, and uh, so I've got Godwin in there as, um, a, as the father of Mary Shelley, um, and how all of this sort of tied into the, the 18th, 19th century, that, that big explosion of stuff. We've got William Godwin turning up in issue four of Dodge and Logic. Um, we've got a big lovely poster that's um, uh, a gorgeous belly dancer with all of these vines winding around her that have got leaves on with pictures of 60 great bohemians <laughs> uh, with a little quote and uh, yeah so we've got William Godwin uh, on that as well so yes I'm, I'm aware of his work you know <laughs> a very great man. Perhaps um, coming along from the anarchy thing, one of the kind of buzzwords at the conference was the relationship between anarchy, as you write about it, and structure. On the other hand, as many of your writings seem to be very focused on structure, and that's just like that. <laughs> yeah. is, do you see that as, a, as a kind of necessity for expressing anarchy, or is it is a kind of paradox you you have to work around? Well, I think that. If you're talking about anything which is uh, um, breaking out of the norm, um, anything which is approaching anarchy or indeed chaos or something like that, then I think it's vitally important to have a structure in place. I think that anarchy needs to be structured, for example. Uh, it needs to be quite carefully structured. Um, as I would say that the debate over anarchy as it's been since anarchy's inception with all of these various subgroups um, tends to demonstrate that uh, a concept that is as simple as no leaders obviously has ramifications that are incredibly complicated and to just launch yourself into those in an anarchic spirit of um, not thinking anything through would be disastrous. So I think that it's <coughs> everything in its place. Yes, I am quite a structure freak. Um, but in some of the later work that I was doing for the hated American comics industry, um, as I refer to them, the um, I was deliberately starting from just a point of impulse and seeing what happened. All of the books that I did for ABC were like that. They started from a point of, all right, I should be a good enough writer to make all this work out somehow. So I started all those series on that basis. And, um, Yeah, a beautifully drawn strip. I couldn't make head or tail of it. I mean, it, it, the thing is, what I, want, what I wanted to do was to, to be able to create a structured works from a point of just pure impulse. Just, uh, okay, in fact, with the ABC books, I'd got one of my notebooks at home. And uh, I was looking through it, 
because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to come up with a, a raft of titles here. Just looking through it, and I just found all these characters' names written down. Um, that I must have just made a note of them one night. You know, Tom Strong, Promethea, Cobweb, all these rest of these things. And I thought, yeah, that'll do. Uh, I've got no idea who these characters are, but the names sound good. Like so the chapters of Jerusalem, just having those... That, that's those it. Those it's the out. idea of just starting out with a tiny little seed. That keeps it spontaneous and fresh. But And structures will emerge. Mm. I mean, there's that uh, famous mathematical thing, the, the game of life, where you've just got a couple of simple rules, you've got a chessboard, you throw the pieces on, and then you move the pieces or take them off according to these two simple rules. And after a couple of reiterations, you've got these beautiful expanding floral patterns. It's just order and structure that will emerge if you like let the them. Like fractal theory. Yeah. yeah. Good. Come on. I think I'd have to be Margaret Mead to, to answer that with any <laughs> kind of knowledge. Um, but I, 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 I tend, when I get sort of stressed out about how disappointed I am with the way sometimes things work out, I think of the Bonobo chimps and the other kind of chimps, the warring chimps and the chimps that just really get along with each other. I, because I, I haven't traveled that much, I still believe there are probably little paradisal islands where everybody gets along and there isn't any war and there's no necessity for war, there's food and for some reason aggression and self-consciousness and cruelty haven't been introduced to that particular group of creatures and so there aren't these cruelties. Um, you know, I think there's because because you're exposing your, your softest parts and because you have these expectations and people, especially when they're at their youngest and most self-conscious, um, their, their fears kind of match their vulnerabilities. And when you're afraid, I think, is when you are more cruel. And... Uh, you know, e you either run away from a situation or you think you've been rejected or you reject another person because you think they're going to reject you. And all these things come into play when we're, we're absolutely ourselves. I mean, even when Alan and I were talking about doing this book, <coughs> the first thing we realized, well, everybody's going to know, you know, so much more about our sexual libidinal makeup than maybe we will feel comfortable about but we have to trust in the fact that at the end of the day, since everybody feels like that, um, this is an act of faith. This is an act of generosity. This is an act of wanting everybody to feel more normal in their own ways and less of an outsider. And I think that that's the same thing with with personal sexuality, you know, you have to think, okay, they feel as self-conscious as I do. They're as vulnerable as I am. We're all on the same page here. It's not like you against me. If we tend to think of ourselves as being united together, another image <coughs> I like is that although mushrooms seem separate on the, the soil, they're actually interconnected underneath the soil. We are all connected. We are strangers to each other. We just aren't in contact at that moment, but we are all, like everything sentient, everything sentient.